My name is Chris and today we're taking a look at my Record Store Day Black Friday pickups and a little bit more. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! So the long Thanksgiving weekend was pretty good to me. On Thanksgiving I saw my family and had a lot of food. I'm sure most of you Americans probably did the same. And then Friday of course was Record Store Day Black Friday which we're going to get to in just a second. But of course Saturday the mighty Michigan Wolverines once again stomped the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's two years in a row, which we haven't done in over 20 years, so it felt pretty good. All in all, it was a pretty damn good weekend, and I hope it was for you too. But I wanted to show you a brief look at some of the stuff I picked up, and I'd be curious to hear about what you picked up, if anything at all, on Record Store Day Black Friday. I started off with Jim Carroll Band, Catholic Boy. This is an absolute classic. If you haven't heard this before, it's much better than you might think. Uh, Jim Carroll, of course, was an author, and he wrote The Basketball Diaries, which was a movie that started some guy named Leonardo or something or other. Uh, and he was a poet, and he was a basketball star in high school, which is how The Basketball Diaries came about before his heroin addiction, and he even dated Patti Smith for a time. Now, I have opened all of these as far as taking the cellophane off, but I haven't cracked anything open inside to see how the packaging is because I figured I would share that with you. This, of course, is a gatefold, as I can tell. And inside we have, looks like poetry here. And, okay, so this is, okay, Cassie Carter is talking about what she liked about Jim Carroll. So we have some reviews. This, this is a memorandum because, of course, unfortunately, Jim died uh, some years back. And you would think with all the things that he did that his musicianship, I mean, he was the singer and the songwriter wouldn't be that good, but it really was. I'm sure you've heard his uh, his main hit, People Who Died, which is on this particular album. And they gave me, of course, Paper Sleeves. Is this a dual LP? Oh, this is a two LP. I didn't realize that. I don't always read the fine print when it comes to buying these things. When I go over the list, if I find the things I want, I just make a list because if I don't make a list and I stand in line, by the time I get there, even though I was first in line this year, crazy, um, by the time they open the doors and I go to where all the records are, brain freeze and I can't remember a damn thing. But on the back, we have just the cover photo, uh, the song list, people in the bands, and it's all done in, a, in an old fashioned kind of type uh, font, typeset font. And it's a nice, it's a nice gatefold, that's that. People have said that I tear these as a gimmick or, or I don't do it regularly. Uh, I do. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. I can tell that it is yellow vinyl. Why do I do this? I don't like to slide them out on paper sleeves because paper sleeves suck. So I hold this down tight so it doesn't slide or scratch as much. It's surface scratches. It doesn't matter at all, but I don't know. I'm just particular. That's the way I like to do things. So this is... It's not quite lemony. It's it's a it's a bright yellow, but it's not quite lemony yellow. And it looks pretty good to me. I mean, it's flat. Thank goodness, because how many records have you picked up lately in general that were not flat at all, let alone RSD pressings? Because my track record with RSD and flat pressings hasn't been great. If I can get my fingers in this damn thing. Is this necessary? Oh, see, I slid it anyway. Absolutely not, but when you do things a certain way for so many years, it's not going to change. This one looks like yeah, it's a little warped. It's a little warped. I saw another trinket that is meant to flatten records a little bit. Uh, I'm going to reach out to the company and see if they will send me a sample for review. Hard to say these days because my reviewing has slowed down a pitch because of work, so... Next up is a band that I saw open for the Ramones and Social Distortion. Ramones was a headliner and Social Distortion opened up. The first band was Overwhelming Color Fast. And I had remembered that name my entire life because in 1992, that was the best show. I mean, to this day, that's one of the best shows I've ever seen. If you've seen the Ramones live, it was outstanding. And it was Social D before Mike Ness became kind of the jerk he is today, in my personal opinion. But I never saw the CD or tape, it was a cassette tape back then, in stores, because they didn't make a huge splash, but the, they were a pretty decent band. When I saw they were on the list, I decided to go ahead and pick this album up. Now, the back's got hard to see photos that are all in graffiti paint. It's got a, uh, shots of the band members. And Butch Vig, legendary Butch Vig, if you were anybody in the 90s and you wanted to be alternative and you wanted to have your record produced by the guy, 
it was Butch Vig. So that's probably why this record sounded so good considering. Uh, I've listened to it online and it's not bad. The snare drum is a little manufactured for my taste. Uh, this one has a colored insert with some pictures of the band playing live shows and the photo shoot from this, I'm assuming. A very Jackson Pollen-esque, is that a word? It is now. Uh, oh, and it's splatter vinyl as well, which is clear. This is probably going to be staticky as can be, even after I wash it. I have another album like this. This one is pretty flat. Thank goodness. But let me move this. I don't know if I can see. The problem is, I have a gray desk. So it's not as contrasty as I would like, but the label is... It, the whole thing is just colorful. I mean, well, color fast. Overwhelming color fast. It's a lot. There's a couple of really good songs on here. Uh, she Said, She Said is really popular, as is the first track, It's Tomorrow. So if you're going to look those guys up, I mean, give it a shot. This might or you know, may or may not be hard to find because it was an RSD release, but then again, not a ton of people remember this band, so you might be able to find this on the cheap if you're looking for it. It's only 27 bucks anyway, where I picked it up. Up next, I have the Mimic soundtrack. Now this has some sort of a die cut thing, so I'm kind of excited to pull this apart. I cut just the top. I don't, I'm such a collector, I don't really want to rip the, the hype sticker. And I probably should have brought a knife, but we'll just be careful and try to rip on the opposite side. Make sure there's nothing on the back. There's no. This is by uh, composed by Marco Beltrami, which if you're into soundtracks, and I am a little bit, I, I'm kind of getting more and more into him as I get older for whatever reason. If you're into soundtracks, he is fantastic. He has done all kinds of, he's known for a lot of different scores, but he's been into horror lately, and he's done things for Scream, The Faculty, this, uh, Resident Evil, The Quiet Place, all kinds of movies, Hellboy, I think he did. So much stuff that Marco Beltrami is is awesome. So, okay, so this is the, the reveal. If you haven't seen this movie, I don't wanna uh, ruin too much, but obviously Mimic, it's in the title. It's uh, Mimicking uh, Human Beings, and... Okay, so this opens from the top. So it kinda looks like it could have been a gatefold here, but it's not, it's just for the die cut flap. On the back we have the track listing, and oh, Marco also produced this album. I might actually have to watch this again. It wasn't a great movie, but it wasn't terrible. The score, however, I really like the soundtrack, so that's that's really why I picked this up. And then inside, it's gonna list all of the players, which I like. I mean, this is how you know this guy is through and through a professional. Uh, the leader, of course, was him. C contractors, violins, violas, chai, all the things you're gonna wanna know or not know. I really think that's great because these people work so hard and they are the unsung heroes. Everybody is always going to talk about the band leader or the conductor, as they should, but the people who play are very important. So, oh my goodness gracious, is that that is that Brolin? I didn't know he was in this. Is that, it looks like it. It looks like it's a little baby Brolin. Not as far back, of course, as uh, Thrashin, which you should definitely watch. Mira Sorvino, I worked with her dad, Paul. He was a sweetheart, God rest his soul. He just passed away recently, but at any rate, this is something I would recommend to anybody to try to pick up, whether it's on vinyl, whether it's on CD, but whatever it is, if you are interested in soundtracks, I don't want this to fall, but it's gonna, it's gonna slide and fall. I'm trying not to set everything on the table so I can make room. And then to get fancy, oh, this isn't the fancy one. This is my, this is my uh, I'm getting old one. Now I was just a kid when this came out, but Duran Duran and Hammersmith of 82, the of course other major Hammersmith album I have is Motorhead, but I saw this and I figured, what the hell? Uh, it's a live album. I'm not usually big into live albums, but it also has, well, let me take the cellophane off so it'll be a little easier to read the track listing because I'm sure that the cellophane is glaring. But it also has a track listing that's gonna have all the major hits that you've ever heard of pretty much, uh, especially to that point. Like this is at the peak, well, almost the peak of their popularity. And it is a gatefold. Let's take a look in there. Let me get the cellophane off the table. All the Taylors and then Nick Rhodes and Simon LeBon. This is, it's a nice clean layout. There's really not a whole lot to say about this, but I do keep these sleeves. Whenever there's a printed sleeve, I keep them. I don't rip these because I like them, even though I don't like to slide them out. But this paper is also a little smoother. That other paper, the regular paper, it's so, you don't hear that scraping when you pull these out. So we've got a gold record, which he did say was going to be gold. And this is, it's a pretty good looking gold album. And it is flat. I like the, the retro on there. Of course, I guess it wouldn't be retro for them. It would just be how things were done. And then I'm assuming the other album is the same, so I'm not gonna pull that out, but it sounds okay. Uh, I listened to it online before I bought it, just because, uh, as I said, I'm not a huge guy for 
live albums. I'm very picky because I like particular sonics. Their performance is very solid, actually. The, the instrumentation was played well. It was sang well. I don't think they did a lot of fixes uh, on the album at all, which is good because a lot of people, Kiss, did, did that in the day when they had a live album. But the sound is, it's okay. It's solid. It's It'll get some play. It's not going to get some, like, overwhelming color fast. I'm going to listen to it every now and again for nostalgia, probably. Or if a friend comes over, I can say, hey, this is that band I've mentioned a million times that you never cared about anyway, and I'll play it. But the, it probably won't get hit, played a ton. But to get fancy, this is where I got fancy. Uh, Oscar Peterson on a clear day, live in Zurich in 71. I have not heard this. I don't need to hear this because I know anything with Oscar Peterson is going to be wonderful. He was such a brilliant pianist. I would say the argument, the endless argument of better between him and Bill Evans is a good one to have because they were just magicians uh, on the keys. The songs, this is what I like about it. There's two on side A, two on side B. There's two on each side because they're all like seven to eight minutes long. You can put it on and just relax and it's got paper sleeves. You know what? I'm not even going to pull these out right now. Actually, you know, I will pull out one. I'll pull out one because I don't want to keep pulling out records because then I have to stack them off to the side because in my in my short-sightedness I didn't bring enough sleeves down to put these in right away but we have a story of what was going on uh the recording and then okay so this is the bass player uh Niels Henning Orsted Peterson who was fantastic it's a three-piece and then there's a drummer and that's all they needed and if you've ever heard these guys play before live or not it's such good jazz and I'm a jazz fanatic so let's take a look at this it's clear vinyl generally don't like clear vinyl because it can be so staticky even after you clean it but maybe i will get lucky i have had a couple of records that when they were uh, clear vinyl splatter vinyl i got very lucky and they didn't they didn't pop like crazy so let's get rid of this this one man that is really clear like you can see that's clear as day uh and it's very flat too i have high hopes for this as far as does it does it sound good as far okay man that's just really you can see the etchings you know the the in the in the uh, the wax uh, the dead wax is so clearly I'm not used to that the really only the clear recordings uh, that I listen to or clear albums I have that I listen to are the one steps from Acoustic Sounds because those are those are freaking awesome so and then last but not least just to make it fun the Dead Milkman these guys you probably have heard them is this worth fifty dollars. Absolutely not. Is it going to get played a lot? No, it really, it really isn't. It's a, it's a classic from them. At least it was in my neighborhood, even though it was their fifth album, and it's called Metaphysical Graffiti, which clearly was a play on Zeppelin. Uh, what's that release? 1975, I think it was. I keep the hype stickers. I'll set that aside for now. But it is a gatefold. It is a double LP, and the inside's got a lot going on. We've got a lot of stories on all of the, all of the gatefolds. There's lots of preambles i don't know what you want to call it i've always loved the little cartoon cow i've always thought their logo was fantastic i used to draw it when i was in high school junior high school whatever and i picked this up mainly because of do the brown nose if you haven't heard that song do yourself a favor look it up it's entertaining oh so this is not a double lp there's stuff in here okay i can live with that i didn't think it would be a double lp mainly because these songs much like the ramones in in length if it's three minutes long, that's a freaking opera to these guys. Like a minute and a half to two and a half minutes is really a standard a standard uh, length for them. So let's see what kind of bonus goodies we have in here because I didn't really realize. Again, I don't I don't do a good job of reading what I'm going to get when I buy these. I just see, oh hey, that's an album that I would like. I'll listen to it maybe on occasion, and then all the bonuses I get. Oh, this is a this is a seven inch. It's a gold seven inch that's actually played at thirty three speed. Okay, Cousin Earl and three songs of the back search. Okay, I'll listen to that too. I like I like 45s well enough as far as the speed, but I don't know. They always seem too short. Of course, a 7 inches is going to be short anyway. And then the Method is Coloring Book, which is a song. Uh, is it sure the song list on here? No, but it's got lyrics. Is that what it is, lyrics? Yep. So I'm not going to tear this either. God, this is good stuff. It's just funny. It's it's kind of punk rock meets ska meets comedy in Who Gives a Shit. But So this is the Methodist coloring book. And I'm going to have to look that up. I'm sure it's just don't color outside the lines. I wonder if that's actual Latin or if they're just being silly. Because clearly it's easy to make up what they're trying to say there. Yeah, this is pig Latin. <laughs> okay. That's good stuff. And then, of course, they're, they're, they're knocking on the, like, so Bozo instead of Zozo. They're knocking on the Led Zeppelin thing. 
as a parody, not as a mean thing. And then, what are they? They're dancing and... <laughs> there they are. The milkmen themselves. This is very entertaining. Okay, now I can kind of understand why the record was 50 bucks. If you're going to put in a coloring book, and it's a few fair pages. Like, this has got to be 15 pages or so. We've got to connect the dots, just in case. So if your niece or nephew comes over, you can do that. And, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's... It's ridiculous, but I'm glad that I picked it up. I'm definitely not going to color it. You know what I might do, though, just for fun? I might take this and make Xerox copies, and then that way I can color in those just for the hell of it. So, Because I was a professional artist for ages. I've, I've retired from that now, which is why I've been missing in action, because I have a new, you know, whole new job and career, and it's been kicking my ass. But that's it for Record Store Day. I am working on other reviews. I have stuff in the pipeline. I'm not dead yet, I promise. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons who helped make these videos possible. Thanks to you for stopping by to watch, and I look forward to next time.